this old uh, Oliver Sacks essay, and I know there was a, uh, a tribute to him at this festival uh, earlier this week. Um, and he wrote this wonderful essay. If you haven't read it, you should go out and just leave the festival right now and read it right now. <laughs> um, called The Lost Mariner, uh, where he discusses uh, a patient with Korsakoff syndrome. Um, and uh, people who are familiar with Sachs' work will know that one question that he was really obsessed with is the question of personal identity. Um, and this whole essay is about uh, this man with Korsakoff syndrome. Uh, Korsakoff syndrome uh, is uh, the result of being an alcoholic. Uh, after many years, I think it's a vitamin B deficiency, and the temporal lobes just disintegrate. Uh, and um, uh, this patient, Jimmy, he had completely lost um, not only uh, his, his ability to form new memories, but also almost all of his uh, memories from the past as well. And so he lived in this sort of bizarre sort of world where he couldn't live in the past, he couldn't plan for the future, um, and he was really only barely hanging on by a thread in the present. Um, and uh, so the, the question that Sachs interrogates is, um, so is Jimmy the same person, or in what sense does he have any kind of identity at all? And in the beginning part, just you know, spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you what happens in this essay, um, he's really obsessed with this idea that you know, memories really are preventing Jimmy from truly existing in any real sense. But then he, uh, in, a, in a twist, uh, he observes Jimmy taking the sacrament at church, and he sees how he's transcended. Uh, he sees how he reacts to the holy music uh, and, and uh, how he acts um, when he's praying. And he says, um, Jimmy was not a spiritual casualty at all. Um, since he could still uh, be moved morally and religiously and spiritually, um, he still very much existed. Uh, and the fact that you know, he doesn't have his memory traces anymore, but that's just, you know, that's just machinery. Uh, that's not who he really is. And so he absolutely has survived despite this devastating brain damage. If you go to people's uh, families uh, uh, who have suffered brain damage um, and you uh, ask them about, well, what are the symptoms that, this, that the patient has experienced? And also, you know, do, you, do they seem like a stranger to you? Do you feel like you still know who they are? Do they seem like the same person deep down uh, or not? Uh, and then you build a, a, a big fancy model, uh, what you find is the extent, and I think that Jesse alluded to this earlier, the extent to which uh, at least people are observing uh, memory loss actually doesn't predict at all uh, whether you think this person has changed or not. Um, the, the, almost the only thing that matters uh, is the extent to which their uh, moral capacities have changed. The one, uh, the one symptom that we found also in, made an independent contribution to identity, we, we weren't expecting it all, no philosophers or, or really almost any kind of psychologist uh, predicted this, and so we were also surprised, is there is a, a smaller but still significant effect of uh, loss of language. Um, so if, you, uh, if the loved one could no longer uh, speak or speak fluently uh, with the patient, um, this was uh, uh, having a, a significant effect on whether you would say this is the same person. We thought that was really interesting because language just hasn't really been absent from the, the discussion in the literature.